ओम सहना बबतु सहना भुनक्तु सह वीर करवा वह तेजस्विना बदी तमस्तु मा विदिषा वह ही ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम ओम शो मित्र शं वरुण शो भगवत्म शन्न इंद्रो बृहस्पति शो विष्णुरुक्रम नमो ब्रह्मणे नमस्ते वायो वायमे प्रत्यक्ष ब्रह्मासी तामे प्रत्यक्ष ब्रह्म वदिष्या ऋत वदिष्या सत्यम वदिष्या तन्मावत तद्वक्तारम अवत अवत मं अवत वक्तारम ओम शांति 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 सो वी आर एट वर्स वन एंड इट सेज ओम द नोअर ऑफ ब्राह्मण अटेन्स द सुप्रीम सो यर दैट्स वॉट इज द फर्स्ट सेंटेंस विथ रेफरेंस टू दैट देर इज अ फॉलोइंग हेम रिसाइटेड सत्यम ज्ञानम अनंतम ब्रह्म ब्राह्मण इज द ट्रूथ नॉलेज एंड इन्फिनिटी and then it says he who knows it as existing in the cave of the heart in the in the transcendent akasha you know hriday akasha is ko jo bolte hain realizes all his desires along with omniscient brahman so that was the one meaning and then we went in detail about what is satyam and what is gyanam satyam was the substratum of everything that's how it, if you have to say in one sentence you know cause jiski wajah se duniya aayi hai you know it's like the rope and the snake the the rope is the substratum and because of the rope you are seeing the snake so that's how we have to see that satyam gyanam is the pure knowledge the ability for any kind of other knowledge to gain so it's a basis of everything the pure knowledge will be called gyanam or consciousness also you can say gyanam because you know that's how you can say so now anantam so now first swami ji when when he starts with anantam he is going to explain the first two words and then why it is called anantam so there is another deeper he will go about the first two words satyam and gyanam okay let's see who wants to read this urmil ji do you want no yeah you can sushil ji <laughs> this is this is your you have the right book go ahead sushil ji it is translated as infinity since by the word satyam brahman was indicated as the real the substratum from which the entire world of the of the finite had as it were emerged it has become the cause of the phenomenal phenomenal world the the cause from which effects arise as parts or ornaments from mud or gold is generally inert and inorganic and as such the doubt may arise that the supreme is an inert and an unintelligent principle like mud or gold to remove such a hasty conclusion it is insisted that satyam though the cause of the world is intelligence itself so what is trying to explain over here is that when we say that something is the substratum and you start giving these examples of uh, you know gold and ornament or mud and the pot or the ocean and the waves so you say okay this substratum so substratum jaise jisko bolte hai na nirjeev ho intelligence nahi ho to immediately shastra ne bola ki it is satyam it is also gyanam gyanam means intelligence also you know like um, we are bharat and i are part of this science group you know which which they are mainly scientists and all that all the engineers and all that and then some of them believe in in vedanta others are not they are like little bit anti maybe i don't know whatever reason and they they want to they were discussing what is intelligence but once you study the vedanta it's very easy to explain intelligence there is a super intelligence out there and we are just little part of it just you you have the powerhouse of electricity and everybody is getting kisi ko zyada mil raha hai kisi ko kam mil raha hai mere dimag mein to bahut easy hai ye explain और वो साइंटिफिक एक्सप्लेनेशन व्हाट इज इंटेलिजेंस वो पागल ही हो जाएगा आदमी सोचने लगेगा कि व्हाट इज इंटेलिजेंस यू आर सीइंग यू नो सारे इंटेलिजेंस का बेसिस ही वो है यू नो एनीवे सो इट इज इट इज कॉन्शियस इट इज इंटेलिजेंस दैट्स व्हाट द 
second point. So now his next paragraph is going to explain what is anantam. This consciousness that is the substratum of the created world may itself end one day is yet another doubt that can possibly come in the mind of the uninitiated. To refute this idea and to show that pure awareness, which is satyam, is itself not the effect of any other cause and as such is infinite in nature. We have the term anantam used here. This term explains that though truth be the cause of the pluralistic mutable world, in itself it is the uncaused cause, unborn and eternal, that the truth reveals itself as infinite and conscious. So he's just saying that, you know, uh, we always, humans always want to know its karan kya hai, bhaji. You know, so Shastra ne bola ki sansar ka karan consciousness hai. To koi puje ka consciousness ka karan kya hai ji? Right, yehi, prob, yehi question karega. Bolega, it is causeless cause. That's where the buck stops. It's self-effulgent. They have explained it in so many different ways. Okay, so that's what it is. Because it is causeless cause, that's why for us it is anantam. There's no end to it. Because there is nothing to cause it. Or jab koi cheez uske piche hoti hai, to bolega, when this gets destroyed, this will also, no, no, nothing like that. So, ye concept hum puri tarah shayad samaj nahi paayenge humare buddhi se. That's why this you have to transcend. You know, like they say, you know, time is just an illusion. I don't know if you heard of that. Time is just a man-made thing, you know, because everything, if it's eternity, mein time kaan se aayega? Socho. If something is eternal, there is no question of time. Time aata hai ki bhai, ek jeez yaan se shuru hui, yaan khatam hui. Usko time bolte hai. Hum log ko ye concept samaj mein nahi aata because we are in this world. But जो लोग वो एनडी वाले होते हैं ना नियर डेथ एक्सपीरियंस जिनको होता है फिर वो वापस आके बताते हैं उनको पूछो वो सब बोलते हैं कि वहाँ टाइम नहीं है हम लोग को वो भी वी कैन नॉट अंडर इट्स लाइक सम समबडी टेलिंग इन अ ड्रीम हे दिस इज नॉट अ ड्रीम यू हैव अनदर रियालिटी वी कैन नॉट अंडरस्टैंड दैट इन द ड्रीम सो राइट नाउ वी डोंट अंडरस्टैंड बट वी हैव टू टेक द वर्ल्ड ऑफ द शास्त्रास दैट इट इज टाइमलेस इटर्नल जोन ओवर दे This is the core of man's own personality, since without the consciousness or awareness, however strong he may be physically, however noble he may be in mind, however powerful in intellect, the individual will be considered dead by the world. Life means expression of awareness. Life means expression of awareful of experiences. When an individual ceases to live his experiences, to live awareful of his outer and inner worlds, that mass of matter having the shape of this creature is considered as dead, and the carcass is claimed by the nature for reconversion into the five elements from which it has emerged. So he's just saying that how important this consciousness or awareness is you know, and I think we in the world understand awareness a little bit more, right? Like I'm aware of the world, I'm aware. So he's saying that how this mass of matter, which is our body, it may be looking exactly the way we are, but if the consciousness is separate, ho gai, then we, you are just a mass of, you're a dead person. And, you know, and then you go back to the five elements. Uski glory sari khatam ho gai. You think that's why he's saying that without consciousness we are nothing. You know, he's just telling you the, that, you know, satyam, jnanam, anantam, brahma ka jo core hai, wo hamari personality hai and that's the most important one in, in our, our self. And that's the same thing what Krishna Bhagavan is talking about, self-knowledge. All that ties up together. That's... In this irrefutable definition made up by the inimitable usage of the pregnant suggestions contained in these three terms, Satyam, Jnanam, Anantam, the immortal text of the Hindus, the Vedas, indicate the absolute reality which is at once imminent, immanent and transcendent. To seek this truth within and to re rediscover it is the divine unfortunate 
conformant of the martyr to his own immortal stature, of the infinite to the dignity of the infinite, of the bond, of the bond, of the bound to the joys of freedom. It's a long, long. Okay, sentence. I know. So I, I will, I'll try to analyze the whole thing. So first, he's telling that whatever definition this shastras gave us, he calls it irrefutable. Nobody can refute this. Inimitable usage means uska koi um, kya bolte hai? Koi imitate nahi kar, uska koi udharan nahi de sakta. Or another one, better one. You know, such a good one. That's what it means. And the pregnant session contained in the three terms satyam, jnanam, anantam. Matlab it is so deep, this all three. And we saw that how Swamiji analyzed it in a depth at what it means. Just don't go by the word meaning. What it actually means is very deep. And he's calling it the immortal text of Hindus because, you know, Sanatan Dharma. That's why it is called the eternal. Why not, you know, in, of course, because it's Atma Gyan, which is itself eternal. It doesn't change. All those laws of nature don't change. That's why it is eternal. And he's saying that Vedas indicate the absolute reality, which is at once eminent and transcendent. Now, these two words are going to come again and again in Bhagavad Gita as we go to this. And in chapter 9 of Bhagavad Gita, verse uh, 4 and 5, when we come across, uska clarity milegi ye eminent and transcendent. Ka, huh? And it's a contradictory language. Eminent means it is right here. <clears throat> you know, we cannot be without it. That's what it means. Eminent. But it's a secret. Guhiyam. <laughs> Everything ties up here. It's there. It's eminent. But we don't understand. It's hard to understand. And it's hard to get to. But it's eminent. And at the same time, transcendent. Because usko koi touch nahi kar sakta. Usko koi, how do I say it? Usko koi contaminate nahi kar sakta. Okay? It's like sunshine. You know, sunshine touches every day, but we cannot contaminate sun. Sun, or sun ki rays pad rahi hai par, we cannot contaminate sun rays. So it is, but without sun rays, we cannot function. See what I'm saying? It's eminent and transcendent. So that, to me, that example, you can understand this eminent and transcendent words. Okay? So that's what this reality is. And then he's saying this last sentence, you know, it's, to seek the truth within, to rediscover it means it's already there. It's not like something new. It's already my nature. I'm just discovering it, rediscovering it. When you do that, that is called the divine unfoldment. So we are doing this unfoldment. Meaning, you know, whatever is within me, I am trying to get to it, unfolding my nature. And he's saying, of the mortal, we are mortals. We think we are mortal, actually. We are not. But if I think that I am the body, then it will take me to immortality because I'll understand my nature. So, you know, that famous uh, mantra, Asato ma satgamaya, tamso ma jyotirgamaya, mrityor ma amritam gamaya, just it fits over here. Because take me from mortality to immortality, it's saying, you know. Asat, asat se sat, asato ma satgamaya, take me from the falsehood to the truth. So take me from darkness to light, light of knowledge, and mrityo ma amritam gamaya from mortality to immortality. So he's saying that we will discover our immortal nature, and then he says of the finite to the dignity of infinite. Right now I feel finite, I feel like you know limited, and now it will take me to infinity, you know. And then the last one of the bound. I feel bound in the world, right? I've been bound by my own mind, my relationship, my this, my that. And then to the joys of freedom. Because our biggest problem is we feel bound. He's saying that this knowledge will take you, this satyam, jnanam, anantam, if you understand it, it will take you from finite to infinite, bound to freedom, from mortal to immortal. That's what it means. So, everybody okay with it? I know it's a long <laughs> sentence. <laughs> okay. 
If there be thus a truth as defined above, how do we reach that Brahman? The terms satyam, jnanam, anantam have a flavor as though they are expressing some definite qualities. And in the ordinary usage of language, qualities qualify objects. As such, the students, as such, the students who are familiar with this word usage in languages are apt to misunderstand from these qualifications that truth is an object separate from the seeker. So, you know, our Shastra ki khudi kya hai na, unho ne har ek point pe soch rakha hai. Sab ka answer diya hua hai. Look, koi, no stone is left unturned. So, is he just saying that kis koi cheez bolo ki it is satyam, gyanam, ananta, brahma, to it is, it is talking as though about some object. Huh? So, he is immediately going to tell you that that's not what it is. So, as a brahm mein mat rehna ki, you know, koi bhagwan, koi vastu hai, koi cheez hai, and I can, you know, of course, there is like a saguna, kya bolte hai, this thing is there, path is there, but that is just a means to get to the nirgun. You know, just, so here it's telling you that the, we might think the truth is something different from me. No, 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 it's not. And that's going to come in the next line of the mantra. Well. He who rediscovers the conscious principle within himself is one who is considered as fully awakened to the divine nature of the man. This awakening, this awakening makes him drop once and for all all his identifications with the false matter envelopments of his body, mind, intellect, and the choking word of plurality created from these three levels. Just as in the just as in any dream, we identifying ourselves with our mental creations come to suffer dreadful sorrows within ourselves. So too, in the dream of plurality, our false identification with matter ends when we get ourselves awakened to our real divine nature. So, this explanation is given by this sentence. Yo ved nehitam guhayam parme vyoman means, you know, he who knows is that existing in the cave of his heart, in the transcendent akasha, that's what is explaining. So all he's saying is that um, how do you realize it? Only when you're awakened. Hmm? And you, uh, you, uh, you realize it within yourself when you awake. And that's why, how do you awake? What, does, what do they mean by awakening? Because we think that when we wake up from तो जागृत अवस्था आ गई पर उसको उसको डिफाइन कैसे किया है मींस ड्रॉपिंग ऑल द आइडेंटिफिकेशन विद इट इट्स लाइक यू नो इफ आई थिंक अबाउट द ड्रीम सपोज इफ आई गेट अ वेरी बैड ड्रीम यू नो लाइक दैट राजा जनक गॉड दैट ही इज अ राजा बट ही गॉट द ड्रीम दैट आई एम अ भिकारी राइट एंड देन ही वाज फीलिंग सो डिस्टर्बड एंड ऑल दैट एंड देन ही वोक अप when he wakes up, he has to drop all that. Hey, I'm not a bhikari. I was not sitting on the jungle. I was not begging. The f- Look how much food I have. Everything. So he dropped the identification with those that all that. That's what he's saying. It's hard for us to understand right now. But that's what happens. That you are, drop the body, mind and intellect. And you are something different from it. That's all he's saying over here. You know. So we have to just have faith. That one day it will happen. Krishna Bhagavan already says, Susukham Pratyaksha Abhagamam. You, know, you can experience it and it's easy. Okay. Practical minded as they all were, the children of the alien stock were not very much enamored by the fact that the Vedas had thus declared a highly poetic and extremely consummate goal of life. They wanted to know how this great realization of the divine in them could facilitate the individual in living a more intelligent and healthy life. Theirs was the cry for a life of subtler joys. Their demand was a complete freedom from the sorrow of the finite. So he just, Swamiji is just reminding us that here they are talking to the students. Who are young and you know it's a practical minded students. Unko jada philosophy ki baate bolna shuru karo to wo ek hi chize bolega. Is it going to make me happy? 
<laughs> we all are looking for happiness, joy. You know, everybody, if you think about it, that's what the whole world is looking for, including animals and, and you know, worms and all that. They just want to be happy, all of them, you know. So that's what their demand is also. The individual is saying, can I live a more intelligent and healthy life? And the cry for the subtler joys in love. Okay, I'll give you happiness, okay? But it's going to be temporary. So you will say, no, 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 I want permanent. If you give a choice, if you temporary happiness, we will give you permanent happiness. Okay, I'll give you happiness, but you have to go to sleep for it. So you say, no, no, I want the happiness. You want to be conscious, right? So that's what it is that it, we want something everlasting and we want to experience it. That's what they are saying. So, what do they say next now? Let's see. However, noble a goal the philosophy may point out to the impatient seekers, it was not acceptable unless it could guide them to the goal that they wanted. The teacher knew this character and the healthy impatience in the students. In the students of that generation, and naturally, he concludes in the same breath as it were, that he who realizes this conscious principle in himself enjoys all his desires all at once along with Brahman. So it's one of those things. On one hand, they said that desirelessness is a, the state, but this is a conversation going on between two people. The same thing is in Bhagavad Gita also. Like at one point, Krishna Bhagavan tells him, karma yoga is better than, uh, you know, this is jnana yoga. And the people argue, hey, why did Krishna Bhagavan say that? On one hand, he's saying jnana is the ultimate. Why did he say that? Hey, he's having a conversation with Arjun. He's not ready for jnana. That's why he's telling him. You know, it, the, it, suppose the child says, I want to go to college. You say, no, 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 right now high school is better for you. First pass this and then you can go there. So same way we have to look at this. That on one hand, they're giving him the highest knowledge, but they also know the student's ultimate goal is to get happiness. So he's telling, he, telling him, hey, don't worry. If you get this, you will be ultimately happy. Tumari sari desires fulfill ho jayengi. उसका दूसरा नाम है डिजायरलेस हो जाना जी कुछ जरूरत ही नहीं है अभी और आगे सो यू कैन लुक एट इट विच एवर वे यू वांट बट इट्स जस्ट अ क्लेवर वे फॉर द टीचर टू टेल हिम दैट स्टिक विद इट आई एम गिव यू व्हाट यू वांट यू नो इट्स लाइक अर्जुना टोल्ड कृष्ण भगवान यू नो दैट इन चैप्टर टू दैट द द डिस्ट्रेस आई एम फीलिंग द पेन आई एम फीलिंग द डिप्रेशन आई एम फीलिंग कोई मुझे तीनों लोगों का राज भी दे दे वो जाएगा नहीं कभी नहीं जाने वाला मेरा ये इतना वो मायूस हो गया था तो कृष्ण भगवान बोला मुस्कुरा के बोला डोंट वरी आई एम गोन गिव यू समथिंग विच विल गेट रेड ऑफ योर ऑल दिस प्रॉब्लम्स यू नो बट एट दैट पॉइंट ही हैज टू गो स्लो ही कान टेल एम इमीडिएटली एवरीथिंग सो दैट्स वॉट इट इज ही जस्ट टेलिंग यू दैट दैट दिस पर्सन हु गेन्स द ब्राह्मण इंजॉयज ऑल डिजायर एंड देन इट्स दे आर गोन गिव एक्सप्लेनेशन वाई I mean, I'm looking at it. It's going both ways. Looking at the higher level and the lower level. Yeah, you, know, you can say it that way because it's it's like when once you get the highest, you know, somebody says, "Hey, I, I will do this work and I will get you know hundred thousand dollar." Huh? Suppose, and somebody says, "Okay, you want hundred thousand? Why don't you do B, and you will get a million? So million me hundred thousand already aa gaya kine?" Right. No. I'm looking at okay. They will get that. That is once they reach, once they are in a, enlightened. At the same time, they still have to live that life, whatever with purushartha, whatever they have. They have to go through that. But it will become easier for the body to take whatever comes along. You know, because they have reached have the enlightenment. So, reaching. You know, when we read this for a second, you think. everything has come to me right now in this as a body but that's that's not it that's why i'm saying the higher is shown at the same time they will realize that because of the life of because of the body they have to go through this and it wouldn't matter to them that much anymore yeah because i get i get that's the point that 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 you can look at it is not going to matter to them because it's like 
when you are uh, dancing to some higher uh, tune lower things don't matter at the right. be- will, they have to go through the body will go through you That's don't even same. realize it exactly. Agar, yeah mm-hmm. even in the worldly sense you think if you are really focused on doing something you know all these scientists and all that when they are so deep into their uh, experiments and oh khana peena sab bhul jate hain <laughs> you know right, yes, you right. Yes, so uh, even can. in the worldly thing that one, yes. once you are doing something higher lower thing it don't matter it doesn't affect you yes yeah the consciousness in the individual being is same as one life factor in all living world it is the eliminator of all joys enjoyed by everybody at all places and times and therefore in experiencing the spiritual center in ourselves we may say that we are at once experiencing thereby all joys experienced by all the living kingdom so he is telling you a scientific fact that they are talking about satyam gyanam anantam brahma right that consciousness is the life factor illuminator of all joys agar wo nahi hoga to hum joy bhi nahi feel karenge हाँ तो किसी को कम जॉय है किसी को ज्यादा है किसी को ये जो है वो सारे का एल्यूमिनेटर वो कॉन्शियसनेस ही है सो फ्रॉम दैट परस्पेक्टिव अगर तुम यू हैव बिकम वन विद द कॉन्शियसनेस तुमको सारे जॉयज मिल गए कि नहीं इट्स समथिंग लाइक हाउ डू आई गिव अ वर्ल्डली एग्जाम्पल द सन इज एल्यूमिनेटिंग दिस वर्ल्ड राइट सो आई कैन सी पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड राइट नाउ बिकॉज आई एम सिटिंग ओवर हियर सपोज आई बिकम द सन आई एल बी सींग एवरीथिंग टूगेदर i don't know if that makes sense so it's just telling you that going to the complete fundamental of it you automatically gain everything that's what he's telling you it's like um, another example i can give is the um, water droplet in a ocean thinks that i am a water droplet and then all of a sudden it realizes oh i am this water which is a whole ocean so become it becomes a whole ocean doesn't feel separate anymore feel the power of the ocean joys of the ocean you know serenity of the ocean underneath everything it gets that's how you have to look at it okay, and that's what it is like one in all and all in one and that's what it is all in one that you, when you become that you are you see the as if seeing the experience of the everybody exactly it's something like um, now i feel you know why people feel jealous or this thing because hey that person has it i don't right suppose if right. if i feel the same happiness that mere ko milta to usko mila wo bhi mujhe happy feel kar raha hai imagine hota hai logon ke paas like your own children you know you don't feel the separation with you if they get something aisa nahi lagta mujhe hi mil gaya ke unko koi award milta hai to hum log ko kitni khushi hoti hai because the oneness is there so from right. that perspective you know, exactly so when if they are happy you are happy too you know so so very this concept is very deep but you can look at it from many angles but it comes to the same conclusion yeah in vedanta the great scientists of life the rishis had made an exhaustive study of sources of joy in our ordinary life the material preoccupation of the world today does not provide the required amount of intellectual quest for such a close study of life for the purpose of investigating into the mechanism of joy transactions ordinarily nowadays even the best of us only feel that there is a joy where when a desire is fulfilled but we do not pause to make a scientific analysis or an investigation into the principles underlying and governing the sensuous joy so here swami ji is going to unravel a very very important part of vedanta where how why do you feel happy where does the happiness come from so in this paragraph or he just telling us that it was vedant jo ye jo apne rishi muni the na great scientists the of you know pers- kya bolna chahiye of our internal life and all that because they investigated what is the source of joy because he's saying that us people like us we are so 
preoccupied with the material things that superficially we think ki, oh, I have this desire to gain this. It doesn't have to be material object. At our age, it is not just material object. It could be a relationship. It could be, you know, somebody needs to behave like this and when they behave, we feel so good. Can be like that too, huh? A situation, uh, you know, emotional thing, whatever. That we think that everything is in all these material things or emotions and all that. That's how we get happy. But... They, they, when they did the scientific analysis into this principle, why does somebody feel happy? Where is it happiness coming from? They came to a different conclusion. And we will see that next time. You know, that, <laughs> like that they do in the shows also, right? When they have series of show, they say, come to a point and then we will do it next time. So then everybody will be excited to see. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can read and you will know what Swamiji is talking about. So I think they, once we understand that, a lot of things will become clear. You know, once their analysis, we understand where the happiness is coming from. Any question? Comment? Actually, in this verse, the entire Vedanta is there. <laughs> you know, if we understood this, we understood a lot. And I think going with Bhagavad Gita, it's all coming simultaneously, everything. Krishna Bhagwan is talking about the same thing. Satyam, Jnanam, Anantam, Brahma is giving him all different words, you know, to get him excited. No comment, no question. No, anybody wants to add anything? This is such a profound teaching today. Um, I think what we need to do is introduce some practical part of it let's let's all close our eyes and absorb this energy absorb this knowledge expand our consciousness do we want to do that for five minutes or so i will leave leave it up, uh, up to people because sometimes this is what the problem yeah, yeah, yeah. is uh, that's, that's very very important people should be ready for it yeah the thing is that on on online it becomes difficult remember when we were meeting in person we were doing it but online it becomes very difficult so it's 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 up to everybody yeah and everybody's not ready also we have to be mentally ready i i do in my yoga class every day but only one person stays at the end yeah, because it's it's a more of a, of a personal journey, you know. Yes. So yes, so yes, so that's yes. what it is. But but anyway, what other thing is that Kamala ji, um, in this class, we all come from different um, paths, Background, yes. different paths, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. And and the idea over here is we are trying to understand the fundamentals so that in your own path you become more strong, because all yes. all, all the paths are equally good, important. All path- all yeah. paths lead to the same centers. Exactly. All, um, so, so yes. uh, I will leave it to everybody can you know meditate them themselves. And but anyway, okay. thank you for for suggesting. And uh, but I think with this class, maybe we'll we'll uh, if nobody has any question, we can question comment. Anybody want to add anything? We can stop. Okay. Yeah, Joe, you you have something. No, we used to do that when we were meeting in the class. That's what I'm saying because uh, that it's it's much more fruitful. And next yeah. week, by the way, I think next week is the one that we're gonna meet. So whoever right. can come, do come. You know. Yeah. Now people should make effort to come. I know in some circumstances it may not be possible, so that's understandable. But just make an effort because meeting in person really has a different energy. You know. I know it doesn't work for me. I have to babysit, but yeah. yeah. Well, that's why I said that. Just try your best. That's all we can do. And circumstances yes. change also, you know. I so, know. Yeah, I whenever know. you can. Okay, so I will close the class here. Um, sarve bhavantu sukhinaha, sarve santu niramaya, sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma karshche dukha bhav bhavet, hariyom shikrupyo namaha, hariyom. Okay, see you next time, everybody. Hari Om.
Yeah. It was very nice. Thank you so much. See you next time. Hari Om Kamala Ji. So this, uh, mm-hmm. uh, I had a comment. Yeah. So here he talked about Raj Vidya, then later on he explains how you do that. Hmm. The Raj Yoga itself. I mean, this is what it is. It, वहां पर इतना डिस्टिंक्शन नहीं है इसको राज uh, विद्या बोला उन्होंने राज योग नहीं बोला सो सो बट इट इज यू कैन कॉल इट सो सम पीपल कॉल इट राज योग ऑल्सो दैट्स वाई वॉज टेलिंग यू लास्ट टाइम दैट इन भगवद गीता वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द थ्री पैच इज कर्म योगा भक्ति योगा ज्ञान योगा राइट बट ही कॉल दिस राज विद्या राज गुहियम सो इधर से सम पीपल थिंक दैट द वर्ल्ड राज योगा केम बट इट्स अ सेम थिंग सी इज टॉकिंग अबाउट द सेम थिंग but he's just telling yeah. different angles of it and and now that we have stuck with it for for you know nine chapters you can see he's just opening up each concept more and more from and he's covering it from every angle but basically yeah. whatever he wanted to tell arjun he already told him in chapter 2 the entire gyan yoga karma yoga bhakti yoga sab bol diya usko magar he told in a sutra form par wo arjun ko pura samajh mein nahi aaya jaise hum log ko bhi nahi aaya So now he is taking each chapter and he is going in more depth with it. That's all it is. No, I meant he tells the technique how you do that. Yeah, technique. So, शुरू कर दिया ना उन्होंने technique पूरा chapter six में तो बता दिया technique. But अभी और और बता रहे हैं उनको. Yeah. You know कि भाई uh, it's something like hey I understood but I'm still not able to do it. So he's saying okay I'll give you a few more tips, few more tips, few more tips. See, you know? it's coming together for us. I used to think jointly all these things, you know. I like without connecting, mm-hmm. hard to connect. These are each one like each item, right? It, now it's connected. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. It it is synthesizes in your mind, and then you start making the connection with the previous one. That's why it takes. You have to do it several times, Bhagwan. So, so I used to wonder why you need to know who am I. He's saying this is your dharma. This is the highest dharma. It's like. If if I don't know who, even in the worldly sense, huh? Right. What role I am playing? If I don't know that, it will be a complete disaster. Right. You know, the president goes home to his wife and start acting like a president. Right. So, उसको जूते पड़ेंगे फिर, right? So at home, he has to act like a husband and then <laughs> work. That's what it is. So, at the core of it, we need to know who we are. Then we can transact with this world better. That's what Krishna Bhagwan is saying. या तुम सारी दुनिया का ज्ञान लेने चले हो ये नहीं मालूम तुम कौन हो राइट right? तो so पहले समझो कि तुम कौन हो सारा सब कुछ आसान हो जाएगा दैट्स व्हाट ही सेइंग ओके गुड थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू हरिओम 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 जी